Mommy, yeah. it's good to meet you. Good, nice to meet you too. I've, oh been, my. I've been watching you since nine, uh, 2017. 2017? Yeah. So you don't have to introduce to me. Yeah. I know you. <laughs> No, I'll still have to introduce myself to my audience. My name is Wadamaya, the one and only annoying village boy who is on a journey to change the narratives of Africa. I'm currently here in Somaliland and I met this beautiful woman in here. I mean, I met her on YouTube before coming here. So I checked her out on YouTube when I was on my way coming here. She got a very beautiful daughter. I'm definitely going to bring her on the camera for you to see her. They own a YouTube channel. So you know what, before I start the interview, do me a favor, there's a link in the description box. Go there, subscribe. You see mother daughter relationship over there. And I know that you're going to see a lot about Somaliland from there. <music> Mommy, yes. It's a pleasure meeting you. Bless and thanks for, I mean, taking me around Somaliland. I was literally scared of coming here. You're welcome. You're so welcome. Thank you. Um, a lot of people don't know who you are. Um, Tell us who you are, what's your name and what you represent. My name is Shamsa Hashi. I'm, I'm from Canada. I've been living in Canada for 30 years. Then I decided to move back home. You were living in Canada for 30 years? Yes. What took you to Canada in the first place? Well, everyone liked um, going to America, not America. So it's, <laughs> it's one of those... So you wanted to go to America? To go to America. 30 years ago? Yeah, but I find out that it's, it's, it's not what everybody thinks it is. What? Yeah. What are you saying, mommy? The life here, the life is good here. The life in North America is you struggle. The life in America is a struggle? <laughs> struggle, yes. But life in here is In good. Africa is good. I mean, what was the struggle like living in America, living in Canada? How was it like? Then you have to fight your way in to make a living. You, you're fighting for your living. Like, you're getting a lot of money, but it goes back to them. You have to pay the rent, you have to pay the car, the insurance, you have to pay your phone, you have to pay the children's school and everything. So, if you are without job for a month, you've been, you've been thrown away. So, you've been living in the streets. The, the constant worry about what it's going to happen, what's going to happen, what, if you would out of job. So and, and I, was, I, was, I was working 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. just to provide uh, for my family. 6 a.m. to, to 6, 6 p.m., yes. How I, many jobs are you doing? One job. One job? Yes, because you have to commit, commit two hours to go to work and two back and eight hours of working. Wow. Yeah. And yeah. what made you decide that, you know what, I'm tired, I want to get out of this place? Well, I've been deciding last 15 years, how do I go back home? Okay. So, but thinking about it a lot and trying to go back with money, that's the hardest thing. You, you're never going to come back with money. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't understand. You live, you're living in Canada, you're working, you, you're making money, but you, when you want to come back, fact, you're saying that you can't come back you with can, money. You can't come back with tons of money that you want to do business with. So uh, I will tell you, save, your, save, your, save time for yourself and just make up your mind and come home. I came back with $10,000 and I've been, I've been gone for 30, 30 years, 30 years. And the, finally I decided, I said, I'm not going to get that, I'm not going to be a millionaire. I'm not going to go back with lots of money. At least push myself to go back. And that's what I did. And how do you feel coming back in here? I'm so happy. And uh, I regret the couple that 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 the many years I've been away. I said, why wouldn't I come back earlier? You regret the number of years that yeah, you've been away. I've been away, yes. H how long have you been here? Uh, three years. Three years. And I, I, I even don't think about I've been there a month. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like your your story is more inspiration. But after coming back in here, do you regret? I mean, living away, the time I wasted in North America. Yes. You regret the time you wasted there? In North America, yes. Every family who wants, who, who's been there have a dream about one day you will go back. But they never, go, they never come back because they constantly worry about who you're going to leave your kids with, uh, what's going to happen if you leave. Just, there's a, my cousin, she has a 21-year-old son, and she worried about leaving him in, 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 in UK. She's living in UK. Mm. Uh, what, what do you worry about 21 years old? Why are you taking care of a 21 years old? That's the first mistake. 
you should leave, retire, come back home and take care of yourself. Wow, so now you're taking care of yourself now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have you retired already? Yes, I did. So what, what are you doing right now during your retirement? I, 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 I follow my passion now. I do gardening. I do some um, whatever I like, I'm doing it. Not whatever I have to live to survive. <laughs> the survival time is over for me. The survival time is over for you? <laughs> yeah. Now you're living your best life. I'm living the best life. Wow. And how did you even convince your daughter to come here? Oh, she was, she was keep coming back here every couple of months. She'd been away, not away in more than two months, and she keep coming back. And then Corona happened. The best thing that happened here. <laughs> <laughs> What's Corona? Corona is not bad. If people think Corona is bad, <laughs> it brings good things too. Uh, it brings good things too. Yeah. So Corona brought your daughter back to you. Corona bring her back here. She was stuck over there, and she said, "What? Why, what am I doing here? My mom's over there doing, having having her life there. Why am I here?" And this struggle. Your, your mom said Corona brought you here. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, Corona made me do it. <laughs> yeah, I was just. She was telling me for years, stop struggling. You don't have to spend 30 years struggling like I did. Just come. And I was being stubborn. I just wanted to live my life and be free until I came here. And there, the freedom was actually here. Living yeah. as a diaspora kid was not free. I still had to wake up and go to work and work for people that don't understand you. And then you come here and you're only with your people. That was freedom for me. That was freedom for you. Like. Yeah. So how long have you been staying here now? Uh, this has been nine months straight, straight, but for the last three years that she's been here, I kept running back every two months, every two months, so yeah. How is the feeling being with your own people? It's unmeasurable, but it's something I didn't know I needed. I grew up in Canada, born and raised there. You barely know much about your culture because families are very widespread across Canada. It's not like in the UK where there's Somalis in this vicinity. It's houses blocks apart, so I didn't get to learn about my culture. Mm. Mom was gone, obviously not her fault, working 12 hours a day. Mm -hmm. When does she have time to teach you anything? People make fun because you don't speak perfect Somali. But it's like, you have to understand the circumstances we were put in. Our parents are working hours. They don't have time to teach us the culture. Yeah. So I don't blame them, but now it's on me. I'm here to learn my culture and that's why I moved. And are you planning to stay here forever? I'm not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. No. You're making mom happy, yeah? Yes. <laughs> I like that. Uh, oh, you like that? I like that. <laughs> you want her to be around you? Yes. You have yeah. other siblings? Yeah, yeah, there's four of us. Oh, wow. Inshallah, they'll come when their time is ready too. I came to learn from my mom. mom. And, and my and mom's mom. mom, yeah. And then I'm in the motherland. So it's like... Three generations and an extra sprinkle of motherland. My my learning days are like endless. I'm always shocked by everything. L let me know um, what is the main aim behind a YouTube channel. My YouTube channel mm -hmm. is to show. Well, when I came, I was shocked with how my mom was living. I just posted it because I needed storage on my phone. Turns out there were so many people equally shocked and relatable. So I realized there's a spot there for the homesick diaspora to see how easy it is to live here. But there's also another view that I'm showing. It's sustainable. There's an easier, a different lifestyle than your typical lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Mom and I do nothing out of the ordinary. She makes me go pick up cow poop on any given day. Yeah, for manure for the blend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see mom and I in the trenches digging cow poop. Whoa. What other diaspora comes on holiday to dig cow poop with their mom? None. But I, I feel like doing that is more fulfilling, you know. Absolutely. Uh, more fulfilling and very relatable. Yeah. Um, I, I really want to understand something here. Yeah. Now you're here. Yeah. You're living your best life. I think she's smiling a lot. She's smiling more than when she was in the diaspora. <laughs> <laughs> but out of all places yeah. in Africa, yeah. you decided to settle in Somaliland. Somali. I mean, we all have that perception out there mm. about the Somali region. Um, do you feel safe coming back in here? Oh yeah, oh yeah. The first thing I feel is the safety. That's what makes me decide to stay here in Somaliland. Remember when they were calling you in al Yeah, and the thing that's been surprised is I've been called my, my, my father's name. No one knows me over there and saying that in al like my dad and my grandfather's name. All but your titles. No one will call me my first name basis. They were calling me my family name. 
And I said, oh my God, it's been, you've been known here, yeah. 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 And proud, no one knows me about it. It's, it's, I'm like ordinary people over there. Wow. But, but here? But here, I've been known as a family generation of families. So. That makes me cry the first couple of times. Now my ear get used to it. But, <laughs> but the, <laughs> the beginning, I was emotional. You were emotional when yeah. people call you your name. And, and, and my family name. Wow. Yeah. Uh, it, it seems you wanna, it seems and you have a lot of, like it seems you have a message for the diaspora. diaspora because yes. the way you're speaking, I feel like you speak out of passion. Mm -hmm. You would love to um, connect with other Africans, Africans in the diaspora. If you have a message for them, what would that message be? But the, the, just the way I said, just drop all you have and leave. I, I, I know that everyone, their back, back of their head, they wanna come back one day. But the time hasn't come. That time will never come if you don't make a decision and come home and leave whatever you are uh, telling yourself that you're gonna go back one day. One day will never arrive. So just come back home. It's, it's easy life here. But it's not difficult living in Africa? What are the challenges? Uh, the challenges, uh, I don't see a challenge. <laughs> I really don't see a challenge. Really? Really. You don't, you two don't see a challenge? I don't, I don't feel it, no. I don't feel it. Mom and I made an made a analogy when we first got here. It was like we were living every day like we were tourists because it's exciting. Things are new. People are... It was, it was a different mentality that we had. And so by being called the Somaliland tourist, it's because we switched the tourist mentality where you are here to learn, observe, and enjoy. When you're a tourist traveling all your other countries, aren't you in the best state of mind? Exactly. Yeah. Then, if you only put your tourist cap on, because I did billions of travels, but when I got here, the same feeling of my happy travel feeling was, it was, it didn't stop for two months. So, when we put our tourist cap on, you can, you can really enjoy and feel easy. Ah. So, we still travel, we go places. Okay. That uh, no one went. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Gotta go for those adventures. Adventure time. We take adventure time and tour around the, the country. Just to get to know your own yeah, country. Yes. Because you've been away for so long. long yeah. yes. I mean, like, a lot of people are saying that there are no opportunities in Africa. Um, let's talk about Somaliland right now. What are the kind of opportunities that um, you, you think, like, the um, Somalis in the diaspora that are coming by, what are the kind of opportunities that they, they will have when they get in here? The business. There's a lot of business that need to be opened. Car rental is one of them. Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of business opportunities. I see it, but I'm not interested. But okay. anyone who wants to do things, this, the, the option is there. If you see in our video, when we're traveling to one of the epic waterfall destinations, yeah. we couldn't get a car rental. We even mentioned it in our video. That's the kind of content I'm giving to the diaspora is, look, there's so many pockets. If you need something and you can't find it in the country, move. That's your business. That's your, That's business. your thing. Yeah. It's not hard. You just have to live here for six months, observe, and you, you're going to need something. Mm. The thing that you need, it's not here. We're a young country. It's only about 30 years, this nation of Somaliland. Mm. So there's lots of well, lots I, to be done. I've been, I, I'll add that to it. The, the IT people, the young people who's in broad that knows IT, yes. they are lacking a lot of IT here. For like businesses, they don't have and advertise and Instagram, and social media, they don't have it. So anyone with a computer is smart. There's a little business in. there, yeah. I, I want you to speak to young Somalis. Mm -hmm. If you have a message for young Somalis, My people. what are you gonna say? Absolutely, I'm a young Somali. Don't exactly. look at it any other way. That, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you have a message for young Somalis, what would that message be? You gotta come and observe, absorb all of this culture because you're not getting it over there. You're in a forced culture over there and you know you've heard it from your adero and your uncle. It means hold on to your culture. Don't lose your culture. Our elderly are worried that we're going to lose our culture. I used to take it the wrong way when they say that to us, but they're actually in fear. But I know a big thing that's holding you all back could be the language barrier. We didn't grow up speaking tough Somali but I pushed myself through it and you guys can too but there's a lot that you're missing and you're not gonna get it over there so you gotta you gotta come, come feel back. it yeah when we have a message to 
anyone watching us right now? Yeah, farming is one of them, one of the businesses that we needed in Somalia because we've been supplied from Ethiopia and we have the water, the rivers, we have the land, why not farm? So greenhouse is one of them that, that you can and harvest the whole year round. But we have the water, but you have to, oh, you have engineer to... the water. We yes. don't have water, we live in drought. But what mom has created is you capture the free rain runoff <laughs> run water. water. Okay. People told mom, you're never going to succeed. Don't so is it the first greenhouse in Somaliland? One of few, yes. One of the few. This is a custom first one. And everyone said, this is, don't do it. There's no point. It's only a 20 foot by 18 foot plot of land. Hmm. You're never going to succeed. You, there's no water in this country. Yeah, Where are you going to find water? Oh. And mom found water. The, I captured the uh, runoff water. And I direct it to that, and I put a tarp in it, and I collect the rain water on there water. to use for the farm every year. So this is just rain water? Rain water, yeah. One rainfall in the entire year yeah. is enough for to give you 500 kg of tomatoes for last season. And this year is a greenhouse tomato, so I'm expecting it more. Triple? Triple. This much give you 5 kg. 500. Imagine 500 kg. And this another 500 kg, and this another 500 kg. You do the math. <laughs> 1,500 kg. <laughs> so this is like your hobby, yeah? This is my hobby, yes. Uh, and I'm doing it for passion. And I see they lacking for and uh, tomatoes, so I decided to gr uh, grow the tomatoes for them. Yeah. All wow. of our imports come into Ethiopia. So yeah. like the, the the country import. Imported for vegetable from Ethiopia. So you're trying to, I mean, solve that problem. Yes. That's amazing. You know, you just have to, you have to open our people's eyes with visuals. So I don't blame them. They lived in drought. They don't expect there to be water. But when they saw our two water. barricades of water. Uh, yeah, they changed oh, them. Oh, that was a different thought. So you'll see the other plots of land. They have now got a water catchment system. This plot of land, everyone made fun of us. It's a singular plot of land for one person's house. It's only 18 by 24. Yeah. That's not going to be a farm. You're never going to make a farm. That's not going to be. Now they come, it's a gallery. People yeah. come knocking <laughs> on the door every day. Let me see the lady who made a farm from a plot of land. <laughs> wow. I, I want to say that, uh, please help me do this. Um, go to their YouTube channel. The link will be in the description. Uh, it's by force, you know, it's by force to subscribe to the YouTube channel. They're going to give you entertaining, educative videos from Somaliland. I'm personally here because of them, because their video really inspired me. I won't lie, I was so scared of coming here, but their video gave me a different perspective. That's why I got in here. So hey, do me a favor, go to the YouTube channel, subscribe and be part of their awesome family. I just found out that apart from the mom doing what she loves, she's also making a huge impact here in um, Somaliland by putting young girls in school. Yeah, we noticed the, the male-female literacy rate was off and it wasn't sitting well with us. So actually one of my subscribers mentioned that we should start a fund and now we've successfully got three young kindergarten girls in school and they come from a family who's never even been to school before. So it's, uh, it's new beginnings. It's nice. How many girls are you sponsoring right now? Thirteen. Thirteen? Yes. So, I know that we are an army and um, we can actually make it 30, right? So, um, what does it take to sponsor a kid to school? 25 US dollars a month. 25 US dollars a month. So, I need um, 30 people who are going to donate 25 dollars every month. Yes. Where do they have to donate the money? You can send it to a PayPal link, I'll have it here for you guys. Or you can send it direct to our money mobile For now, you have to contact our Instagram page and mention that you're really in it for the long run. Because these girls are—they're starting kindergarten and they need to finish through high school. We're not here for—we're not here for half schools. We want to get fully educated girls. Can, can somebody pay? Because I—I I, I think um, somebody can pay throughout instead of paying twenty-five dollars every year. Yes, we would absolutely take uh, one-time donations if that's the case. All right. So I need twenty-five people to do one-time donation. Thank you. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana Mr. Ghana baby. baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm out. <laughs>